sa mga naging balikan Kasang natin aabot kahit asan ka ma Sakit na ng panubok na panahon Kahit sila kaakibat ay diskusyon Sama-sama tayo Fantastic morning, our dear Del Pilarians. You are tuning in to Teleradio Marcelo, ang telearalan ng bawat malulenyo. I hope everyone's doing well and safe at this point in time. I am Aminia, your literature buddy, your companion as we journey to the realm of literature. Who would have thought? We are in the final episode of quarter one. We are about to end a chapter of our journey. But before we proceed to the discussion, here are the most essential learning competencies. To produce a creative representation of a literary text by applying multimedia skills, and to choose an appropriate multimedia format in interpreting a literary text. Today's objectives are demonstrate understanding of a short story, analyze a short story by identifying its basic elements, and appreciate the use of multimedia in sharing the lessons learned from a short story. I'm sure that all of you will participate actively so that we can achieve these objectives. So like the usual thing we do, let's have some uh, warm up exercise. I would like to know if you can still recall concepts from our past lesson discussed by Mam Ma Gina Fundano. So get ready for our review questions. So here are some stories or anecdotes, so you have to determine its purpose. You are going to use the emojis below. So you are going to type in the laugh uh, emoji. Uh, if the purpose of the anecdote or the story is to bring cheer. Heart, to reminisce. Praying hands, to give caution. And a smile or a smiley to persuade or inspire. Again, instead of you uh, typing in the words, you're going to type in the emoji in the comment section. So I'm going to read and present to you the stories or anecdotes that I have. So please take note. Again, we have laugh, heart, praying hands, and smiley. Take note of them. So for anecdote number one, so when I was a child, my family went on a summer vacation to Mount Arayat every year. Last year, my sister saw a big snake while she was hiking. She was so terrified. She ended up sitting on a huge rock for an hour just to make sure it had gotten far enough away from her. She still won't go hiking alone anywhere. So what do you think is the purpose of this story? So again, we have laugh, to bring cheer, the heart, to reminisce, uh, the praying hands, to caution, and the smiley, to inspire or persuade. So you may now type in your answers in the comment section. Okay? 
So let me see. The correct answer is yes. So the heart emoji, which is to reminisce. Okay. So let us proceed to the next anecdote. So one day during a lecture tour, John Marquez entered a local barber shop for a shave. John told Dave, the barber, that this was his first visit to the town. You've chosen a good time to, to come, he declared. Oh, John replied. John Marquez is going to lecture here tonight. You want to go, I suppose? I guess so. Have you bought your ticket yet? No, not yet. Well, it's sold out, so you have to stand. Hmm, just my luck, said John with a sigh. I always have to stand with that fellow lectures. So what do you think now is the purpose of this anecdote? Again, type in your answers in the comment section. So we have the laugh, heart, the praying hands, and the smiley. So type in now, okay, what do you think is the purpose of this anecdote? So I'm going to reveal now the answer. Okay, that is to bring cheer. So the answer should be the laugh uh, emoji. Next anecdote. Before giving a presentation on the dangers of drug abuse, the speaker tells the audience how he himself used to abuse drugs and explains the negative effects it brought about in his life. Okay, so what do you think now is the purpose of this anecdote? Type in the emoji in the comment section. So it's about... Uh, a person who used to take drugs and sharing the negative effects of a drug use. Okay, I think you have typed in your answers now. Okay, so the answer is the praying hand. That is to give caution or to caution. Okay, so for the next item. The best man is giving a speech when suddenly another guest, clearly drunk, stands up and yells. That reminds me of a wild party I went to with a groom before he got that new ball and chain. If you had told me back then that he would choose just one woman, I never would have believed it. Okay. So what do you think now is the purpose of this anecdote? Again, type in your answers. We have laugh, heart. The praying hand and the smiley. So no need for you to type in the whole uh, statement or the phrase. Okay. So the purpose is. Okay. So the laugh emoji or to bring cheer. So I also uh, I have one last anecdote here. Members of a Girl Scout troop share stories about their favorite activity or trip that the group went on during the year. Okay, so members of a Girl Scout troop share stories about their favorite activity or trip that the group went on during the year. What is the purpose of this uh, anecdote or story? Laugh, praying hands, heart, or smiley? Type in now your answers in the comment section. Okay. So the answer is heart, which is to reminisce. Okay. So job well done to all those who got the correct answers. So this simple review shows that we are fond of sharing numerous experiences in life. Maybe be with our family members or in, uh, with your friends. Sometimes, we might not be aware that we are already sharing stories like anecdotes in our daily conversations. Okay, so again, congratulations. Good job to all those who got it right. 
So I have here um, a motivation activity, which is uh, will give you, which will give you an idea of what our lesson proper will be for this day. So I have here a video clip of a famous novel entitled Little Women. So listen attentively because I will be asking questions after. Although I also have uh, a short, uh, like a plot about the story. So this is courtesy of uh, YouTube. We got this video from YouTube. So let's watch. Okay, I'm going to just uh, hang on. Okay. I'm just going to... Okay, I have to pause it a little so that I can fix... Okay. Okay, so in case that we were not able to understand some of the things that we heard from the video, I have also here like a brief background about the story. So uh, Little Women, it's about the March sisters who live and grow in post-Civil War in America. So Louisa May Alcott's autobiographic, uh, autobiographical account of her life with her three sisters in Concord, Massachusetts in the 1860s. So it's, this is where they live. With her father fighting in the American Civil War. So sisters Joe, Meg, Amy, and Beth, so they were the ones uh, you saw in the video, are at home with their mother, a very outspoken uh, woman for her, of her time. The story tells of how the sisters grow up, find love, and find their place in the world. With their father away fighting in the Civil War, uh, Joe, Meg, Beth, and Amy grow up with their mother in somewhat reduced circumstances. They are a close family who inevitably have their squabbles and tragedies. But the bond hold, uh, holds even when, later, Men friends start to become a part of the household. So the four sisters and their mother at home, their father is fighting in the war. So Louisa May Alcott's semi-autobiographical novel has captured young women and the young at heart for years. On Christmas evening, they receive a lovely dinner by their neighbor, James Lawrence. So Joe meets the old man's grandson at the dance. Joe, Amy, Beth, and Meg befriend him. So that's just a brief uh, background. So now 
where do you think did the story happen? So I got here. Uh, I think I was able to mention it a while ago. So where do you think? Uh, you can actually tell the exact location or to be in general. Okay, type in your answers in the comment section. Okay. So where did the story happen? Okay, so it's in the Four Sisters house or it, or it could be in Concord, Massachusetts. So it's where the house is located. But most of the events that happened, the story, it happened in the uh, in their house. Okay, so both is, is, is accepted. It could be house or Concord, Massachusetts. Next question. So who are the characters in the story? So I also uh, mentioned that. So there were actually four, uh, four women that I have mentioned. So what do you think are, are their names? Their names are quite short. So you may type in the answers in the comment section. So that's the clue. I know they, they are four. So it could be five if you add up uh, the two other characters that was mentioned when I read the brief background earlier. Okay, I'll be waiting for your responses. So you may just uh, type in the names of the four main characters. Okay, so who are they? Okay, so we have Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. So they're they were uh they are sisters. Okay, so we can also add up the mother and James Lawrence who uh they befriended. Next, uh what was the story about? What do you think? So if uh, we can recall from the story, it's uh most likely we uh about Joe creating, uh, being a writer, and she writes for a living so that she can also support her siblings because their father was not around being in the war. So I have here actually uh, choices. Do you think it's about love for A? B, is it family? C, is it pursuing dreams? Or D, it's about uh, self-sacrifice? What do you think is the story uh, all about? So you may just type in the letter. So letter of your uh, answer. Is it A, love, B, family, or C, pursuing dreams, D, self-sacrifice? So what do you think is the answer? Just type in the letter of your answer in the comment section okay some says uh it's letter c okay some says it's b so let us see actually the correct um answer here is it could be yeah it's letter c pursuing one's uh, dream Okay, because both uh, all of the sisters they have their own dreams that they wanted to pursue so but there are some uh, of course challenges along the way as they pursue their uh, dream okay so thank you for all the responses the following terms will be discussed in detail in our lesson proper so actually we will be discussing about the basic elements of a short story story so the first uh, element so we have six the first element is of course the character so earlier i asked you about who are the characters in the story so take note that character is an element of a short story so a character could be a person so in some stories, it could also be an animal. So they usually take part in the action of the story or other literary work. So the way an author develops the character in a, uh, in a story is very important. And for me, it's very crucial 
in making the story uh, very appealing to the readers. And uh, it is said uh, that the heart of the story are really the characters. And uh, there are also two uh, most important characters in the short story. So we have the protagonist and we have the antagonist. So I guess from the images that you see in this presentation, you can already know or have an idea of what a protagonist and an antagonist is. But of course, I have here some description to help us determine more what characters are they. So for the protagonist, this is considered to be the most important of all the characters. So it is the character who learns something or undergoes some changes throughout the course of the story. So sometimes in some stories, the protagonist can be depicted as the hero uh, whenever there is a, a heroic act being done by this character or the protagonist. But in any case, the story always revolves around the protagonist. So meanwhile, what is now the antagonist? So the antagonist now challenges the main character. So it has no concern for the well-being no, of the main character or our protagonist. So it could be a person, could be nature, society, or any intangible matter that contends with or creates a problem for the protagonist. So if you have seen some other uh, movies or maybe in books, no, the antagonist could be nature like that of typhoon, we have earthquakes, so we have natural calamities. Let, uh, let's say there could be also plagues, for example. So in, in the society, there could be like in, if there is bullying, so there's a group of bullies, or it could be oppression in the society. So th that could be also the antagonist in a story. So we don't only refer to people here. So they could be a person, nature, society, or any intangible matter. Next element is the setting. So a while ago also, I asked you about uh, where the story happened in the trailer I have uh, uh, presented. So when we say setting, so this is another element. So the first element is the character now, setting. So it refers to the place or the time when the story happens. So it could be based on, the real, on a real place. It could also be based on, on a real time or it, it could be the author's imagination. So sometimes there could be stories with different settings. So when we analyze the setting of the story, we have to consider where the action is taking place or maybe where are the main events happen so that uh, sometimes we are having uh, confusion as to where the setting is. So we have to take note of these considerations. So if there are a lot of settings in the story, we have to take note where the action took place so that uh, we will know where the setting really is. So another characteristic also of the setting is that sometimes the author uh, used descriptive words to describe, let's say, the landscape, the scenery, the buildings, or the season or weather to provide a strong sense of uh, setting. So whenever an author does that, it will help you as a reader to visualize and connect to the story plot. So it would be better sometimes if uh, the author have uh, these descriptive words. So it makes us appreciate more the setting and make it easier for us to visualize. Okay. So the next element is the plot. So this is the actual uh, story. Actually, the one I have presented to you a while ago for the motivation activity, it's uh, the plot of the story. So this uh, tells what the story is all about. So there could also be when uh, we read the plot, there are series of events and characters' actions and, uh, that lead to the highest point of interest in a short story. So... 
here are the different parts of a story structure. So you can follow uh, through the diagram you see uh, below the lower part. So these are the different uh, parts of a structure. So you see the arrow, the blinking uh, yellow green arrow. So we are in the exposition part. So this is the beginning of the story. So it, this is where the author usually introduces the characters, identifies where the story is happening, and establishes the main conflict. So meaning uh, the characters being introduced and the setting where the action will be taking place and uh, a little of uh, the main conflict. So that is exposition. Next, so you see, uh, we already moved uh, in, the, in the diagram you see below. So we have the next is the rising action. So this event occurs as you begin to move throughout the story. So this is where the conflict start to build. So these are the series of events that will lead to the conflict. Next, so you see the diagram, we are already in the climax or in the peak actually it's the peak so this is the most exciting part of a short story why because uh this is the part where uh there are decisions that will be made or sometimes there are important things that are discovered so there are sometimes revelations you now being uh presented so this is now the climax Next to climax is the falling action. So you see the diagram. So in this point, uh, the problems uh, already uh, start to work themselves out. So meaning the problems are slowly being resolved in this uh, part. And the excitement becomes less and less as the conflict now is being resolved. Okay. And the last part is the resolution. So this is now the solution to the problem in every story. Okay, so you see the diagram there. So because the the problem was already already resolved, so it's like he was able to go to the finish line. So sometimes when we talk about the resolution. There might be times that as a reader, we have our preferences on how the ending would be. But uh, it's the opposite of what the author uh, did in the resolution. So sometimes if uh, that happens, as long as the resolution is, in, uh, is connected or related to the tone or theme of the story, we can already consider it as resolved. Okay, so that's another reminder for the resolution. So next is the conflict. So this is the fourth element. So I have made, made mention also of this one a uh, while ago. So it's the problem of the story. So sometimes we need, or actually we need uh, the, someone for the protagonist to challenge him or her. So that's the purpose of the conflict. So without the conflict, the story will not go anywhere and will not be interesting for the reader. So actually, this is the reason why uh, the short stories become more interesting because there is a conflict, okay? So there are uh, four types of conflict. We have man versus man. So meaning it, it is, it's like uh, the protagonist and the antagonist. So if there are two characters who challenge each other then two man versus nature so if you can recall what i've mentioned earlier that the antagonist can be in uh, nature man versus himself so let's uh, let us say there are struggles within oneself so it could be man versus himself or it could be man versus society so these are the type of uh, conflicts the fifth element is the theme. So it is the central idea in a short story and a general truth. 
So this is considered as the author's message to the reader. So when I asked you about earlier what uh, the story is all about, I am pertaining to the theme. And you answered uh, pursuing dreams. So that is the theme of the story. So each of them, they have their own dreams and the story now uh, revolves on how each of those four sisters will achieve their dream. So in my example here, it could be about friendship, self-sacrifice, it could be betrayal, vengeance. So it depends on how the author will uh, uh, convey the message of the story in these themes. So the last element or the sixth one is the point of view. So it is the way the story is told or narrated. So it is also known as the vantage point that a writer uses to narrate the story. So likewise, we also have different types of a point of view. So we have the first person wherein the narrator participates in and tells the story using the pronoun I. So we can assume that the narrator is also included in the story. On the other hand, we have also the limited third person. When we say limited third person, the narrator is not in included or it's not in, in the story. But how does, uh, how does the narrator narrate? By using the pronoun she or he. But... Since this is limited person, the narrator is unable to see into the minds of the characters. So we have a counterpart for this, the omniscient third person. So likewise, the narrator is not in the story and also uses the pronouns he or she. But this time, the narrator can tell the thoughts of the characters as the narrator can see into the minds of the character so that is the difference between the two the limited uh, third person uh, the narrator cannot predict the thoughts or let's say uh, uh, interpret the mind of the characters whereas in the omniscient third person the narrator is able to see through their thoughts so there you go these are the six basic elements of the short story so let's have a little uh review so we start with the character so we have also the setting the plot we have the conflict the theme and the point of view so these are the basic elements of the story so now let us now find out the elements of the story sinigang so we have that in our module so I have here the plot of, uh, this, of the short story Sinigang so that we can also recall what happened in the story. And after that, again, I will have some questions for you. So I'll be reading uh, the plot of Sinigang. Okay. So the story is all about Lisa, who narrates how she deals with the issue of her father having an affair with another woman and how it emotionally separates her from him. So the story started when Lisa and Tita Loleng prepared cooking sinigang. Tita Loleng asked questions to Lisa that led her to reminisce the memory when she met the mistress of her father, Sylvia, in the burial of her half-brother, Lem. As they continue cooking sinigang, Lisa remembered her encounter with Sylvia. I was surprised, for I had not heard anyone approaching. I looked up slowly. The woman looked to me like she was in her 40s, the same age as my mother. Then, the cooking continues. She also remembered the time when she and her sibling used to prepare kangkong meals with their mother. As she finished cooking sinigang, her father's favorite dish. She recalls the grave of her half-brother Lem, where her father cried, then he looked at her. He fell on her shoulder and said, I'm sorry. While waiting for the stew to boil, 
Lisa pictured herself seated in her usual place beside her father, who gave her a compliment for she cooked sinigang the way he wanted it to be cooked. Okay, so like what I've said, I have, of course, the questions. So where is the setting of the story? Is it A, farm, B, house, C, cemetery, or D, garden? So where do you think did the story happen? Type in all, uh, only the letter of the correct answer in the comment section. So where do you think is the setting of the story? A, farm, B, house, C, cemetery, or D, garden? Okay, the correct answer is B, house. So it happened in the house of uh, Lisa. Next question. Who is the main character in the story? So I think that's very obvious in uh, what I have read. Who is the main character in the story? Is it A, Sylvia, B, Lisa, C, Lem, or D, Tita Lolen? Who is the main character in the story? Okay, A, Sylvia, B, Lisa, C, Lem, or D, Tita Lolen? Okay, so the correct answer is B, it's Lisa. Question number three, what point of view was used by the author in telling the story? What point of view was used by the author in telling the story? Is it A, third person, B, omniscient third person, C, first person, or D, limited third person? What point of view was used by the author in telling the story? A, third person, B, omniscient third person, C, first person, or D, limited third person? Again, type in the letter of your answer in the comment section. What do you think is the point of view? Okay. The correct answer is letter C, first person. Question number four. What do you call the series of events when things begin to happen in the story? What do you call the series of events when things begin to happen in the story? Is it A, rising action, B, theme, C, exposition, or D, climax? Again, A, rising action, B, theme, C, exposition, or D, climax. Write, or I mean, type in the answer in the chat or comment section. Okay, the answer is A, rising action. Question, so this is the last question, no? I have Question number five. So what element is presented at the final part of the story? So I, get, I, I guess this is very easy. What element is presented at the final part of the story? Is it A, resolution, B, theme, C, exposition, or D, climax? What element is presented at the final part of the story? A, B, C, or D? Type in now your answers in the comment section. Okay, so the correct answer is A, resolution. So good job, everyone. Okay. So let us remember that a short story has six basic elements that you as a reader should look for when you analyze one. So every short story begins with the seed of an idea. Hence, the author should think of these basic elements when writing a story. Although not all stories put equal importance on every aspect 
each of these elements must be expected in the story. So these are the sources of uh, the information that were uh, presented here. So while they are being flashed, oh, so are there literature enthusiasts? When you can identify and describe literary elements, it will enable you to interpret and respond to a text. Focusing on and discussing key details of literary elements support the understanding of the author's message and purpose. So learning these elements will equip you in making your own stories. So um, we'll never know. You might create a masterpiece in the future. So once again, in a journey where endless possibilities begin, I am Maminya, your literature body for 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. Now signing off. Goodbye and thank you. And thank you to Mom Cherry and all our colleagues in the department for this wonderful presentation. And uh, see you next time for second quarter. Thank you so much and have a great day. Goodbye. at your service. Kaya naman, ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo ay mahalaga sa amin to improve our programs on air and online. Para alam ni teacher yung strengths as well as the things in your mind na mas makatutulong sa mas effective na pagkatuto sa Teleradio. Please take time to send your feedbacks via Teleradio Mu, which you can access by scanning the QR code on the right or typing the URL provided here bit.ly slash 3 o r v a y 9 One more this time you follow bit.ly slash 3 o r v a y 9 Kaya send your hashtag TBH o hashtag RT dito sa Teleradium U Kung saan ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo, ay mahalaga sa Teleradio. Beat.